There was once a time when people could communicate with flowers, trees, birds, and whales. People knew that their lives were but a small part of a great universe. They revered the sun, respected the moon, inquired of the wind, prayed to fire, were healed by water, and rejoiced with the earth. Then, with remarkable technological progress, we began to consider ourselves masters of the universe, with the rest of nature existing solely for our benefit. We rapidly began to forget the very language that once enabled us to communicate with nature. Will this ability to communicate be lost forever? Or will we find it again as we learn to work in harmony with our newfound progress and technology? brought up in this area mm -hmm. I wasn't aware of all the influence mm -hmm. uh, until I went away from Guidor and I started to live in Dublin mm -hmm. and especially when I started to compose music I discovered that um, I was uh, using the inspirations and a lot of the scenery and a lot of my time I spent here growing up uh, I started to evolve from the music that I'm composing so it is very important to me. But again, it's not something that I was very aware of while I was composing. Mm -hmm. It's only afterwards when I listen to the music, when it's finished, that I can hear all these feelings mm -hmm. through the music. Mm -hmm. In Europe, long before the arrival of Christianity, there lived a group of people who spoke a common Gaelic language, they were called the Celts. The Celts are known to have migrated from the foot of the Himalayas at the end of the Ice Age, and they believed that the divine was incarnated in everything. They revered the sun and the stars, 
and believed in the existence of a great spirit who bestowed life in all its natural manifestations, in human beings and animals, in trees and grasses, even in rocks and the wind. Driven out by the Germans and Anglo-Saxons, the Celts fled westward until they reached the west end of Europe and settled in Ireland. Uh, one particular beach, Maharagalvan. This was the first place mm -hmm. where the people in Guidor used to live, and that's very special to me because I have it related to one of my songs mm -hmm. on the album Watermark mm -hmm. on your shore. Especially my grandfather, he was a great mm -hmm. storyteller. Mm -hmm. From when I was a very young girl, mm -hmm. I um, would sit and listen to him when he'd come back from school. Mm -hmm. I would wait for him, and oh. then I would um, mm -hmm. go down to his house, mm -hmm. because we lived right beside him, mm -hmm. and I would sit with him, mm -hmm. and he would tell me so many stories. to sit and listen and then I would fall asleep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I like to see myself as uh, the modern Celtic composer. Mm -hmm. Late in the 1980s, the music of Enya suddenly emerged in Ireland and spread quickly beyond its borders. Enya's music stirred an inexplicable sense of familiarity in the hearts of many. If this sense of familiarity finds its origins in the ancient Celtic spirit, as Enya herself suggests, what was this Celtic spirit? Together with Mayumi Tsuruoka, researcher of Celtic art, we visited sites in Ireland where traces of Celtic culture can still be found. Numerous relics of swirl hieroglyphs engraved on giant stones can be found in places that the ancient Celts revered as sacred sites. For example, the entrance to the remains of Newgrange, which was built around 3200 BC, is protected by a giant stone engraved with three spiral hieroglyphs. The interior of the chamber, where some say the souls of kings commune with the universe, was designed such that the sunlight at dawn on the winter solstice enters through a small opening at the entrance, travels down a narrow 30-meter corridor, and into a small chamber far in the back. There, the sunlight comes to rest on three spiral hieroglyphs engraved in the stone. ケルト的な思考っていうのは一見渦巻きのようにね遠回りで全く瞬間にこう湾曲するわけですから前が見えないわけですねでその見えない先にねまた一歩踏み出してさらにまた見えない壁とか闇とか森とかが前に来るしか
しかしその繰り返しというのは二度と同じそのなんですか演習の上をたどらなくて聞いたものがなんかその船に、まあ、乗せられて今私たちがいる世界じゃなくて。The Celts believe that the divine was incarnated in all natural manifestations, and they worship the earth goddess Brigid above all else. The Celts regarded this fount from which holy water springs as a sacred site. The fountain also represents a doorway connecting us to the womb of the earth goddess Brigid. <laughs> そのあらゆる生き物の誕生を司ると同時にその死もコントロールするというでギリシャの場合はそれがガイアになるし、まあ、ケルトの場合はキリスト教になってからの聖ブリジット。According to Celtic mythology, there was a period of darkness when the sun was covered for three days by treacherous clouds, but Bridget called the sun back to earth. And all life was resurrected. Although Bridget now appears as a Catholic saint, an engraved Celtic spiral is clearly visible at the center of her cross. Saint Patrick first brought Christianity to Ireland in the year 432 AD. At that time, the Hill of Tara was the Celts' most important sacred site, a holy place in which supernatural beings manifested themselves in physical form. Saint Patrick met with the first Celtic king who ruled Ireland here on the hill of Tara. The mounds of varying sizes were entrances and exits connecting this world with another. Deities and fairies from the other world entered through these gateways into the material world. They reportedly conversed and played with the people living in this world and manifested many mystical events.
1,500 years have passed since Catholicism was introduced in Ireland, and the concept of nature once embraced by the Celtic people appears to have all but disappeared. But in fact, this Celtic spirit still survives in the Catholic customs that are practiced here. と私たちのそこに手を差し入れた時に治るというセントプリジットの泉ですよねその水に触れるっていう人間の一番こうなんていうんでしょう日常的な行為に最も聖なる瞬間があるっていうしかもそれが私たちの体にこう染み入ってある
Supernatural spirits incarnate in words and music. He or she who can master them is a messenger of God. The Druid priests who guided Celtic society were also outstanding musicians and poets. visit each other's houses mm -hmm. and they would sit mm -hmm. at night time mm -hmm. and around the fire mm -hmm. and this they would tell stories mm -hmm. and then uh, they would uh, sing songs mm -hmm. the children would dance or, mm -hmm. but it would go on for mm -hmm. many hours mm -hmm. it was called like a, a mm -hmm. garnya mm -hmm. which would meant visiting mm -hmm. and when I was young I would have listened to all the traditional music and then um, when I went to boarding school, mm -hmm. I was introduced to the classical music and I love this as well. Mm -hmm. I can sense the combination of mm -hmm. the traditional music with the classical music. Mm -hmm. But um, my love has always been for melody mm -hmm. and in the Gaelic music, mm -hmm. melody is very strong. Mm -hmm. The Celtic people prefer to preserve their folklore and mythology by word of mouth and through music rather than in written form. Enya grew up with this Celtic mythology and music. Her first exposure to contemporary music may have resurrected her ancestors' spirits. で、あの、私たちIreland is at the west end of Europe. Farther west, in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, there is a small island called Skellig Michael. 
it is thought to be a paradise where the spirits of the dead live on forever. A 300 meter cliff stands high on this island and not a single tree grows here. During the 5th century, Christian priests underwent rigorous training on this barren rock. The Celtic people could see eternity in this desolation. They seem to be reminding those of us alive today of something important that we have lost. The visible world is not everything. The mind embodies limitless possibilities, and our lives are only a small part of a great universe which goes on forever and is intimately interconnected. The view that our lives are only a part of the great universe was not exclusive to the Celts. Back before people had forgotten to respect and learn from nature, it was a universal view shared by all the people in the world. Memories from our distant past must surely be inside each of us living here and now at the end of the 20th century. The inexplicable familiarity of Enya's music may come from a reawakening of such quiet memories in each and every one of us. And some scholars say that the spider symbolizes uh, eternity and a death and uh, revival. And it feels uh, like that. Yes. Yeah. So do Even you, think, if you, to draw you, do it. you agree? Yeah, because mm. if you to draw it, it, like it just goes on. Mm. You feel like it goes on forever, mm -hmm. you know. Especially when you're going in. Mm -hmm. It just feels like it could mm -hmm. carry on. Mm -hmm. How far I can go. <laughs>